This is the second in a series of videos on how to centralize your ServiceNow experience through Edbot. If you haven't watched the first video, you probably should. You can find a direct link in the description below. In this video, we're going to cover how to update and close a ticket in ServiceNow. Following this video, we'll explain how to incorporate Microsoft's Language Understanding Intelligent Service Offering, also known as LEWIS, to help with automated responses so your IT support desk answers fewer calls and spends more time on higher value tasks and projects. The prerequisites for this video are the same as the last one, so friendly reminder, if you haven't watched the first video, you probably want to. But if you forgot, you'll want service accounts to both ServiceNow and Microsoft Flow, and licenses for AtBot Enterprise for every user who will be accessing ServiceNow through AtBot. This AtBot skill is a little more complex than the last one, mainly because of some syntax requirements from ServiceNow. Basically, in this scenario, a user has a ticket that they want to close. They tell AtBot, AtBot requests the ticket number, AtBot queries ServiceNow, ServiceNow closes the ticket, and AtBot informs the user of a successful closure. ServiceNow's connection to Flow requires the ticket number be provided two ways, though. So we have to introduce a couple variables into Flow. Don't worry, it's not very complex. Anytime you need to use input from a user across multiple steps, it's important to use a variable. You'll see why in a bit. The first variable is ticket ID, which is what I'm calling the ticket number when we first get it from the user. ServiceNow calls this field number in the first action we use, which is why you'll see that later during the demo. The second variable is system ID. We use a different action to make updates to the status of a ticket, and the fields in that action require a different variable. They call it system ID, and while that might make you think we're talking about the domain or tenant ID, it's actually the ticket's ID number in the system, hence system ID. So let's clarify this a bit. To make any updates to an open ticket, you first have to query that ticket. The ticket ID is used to query the ticket, but to make the changes, we have to use the system ID. So let's talk about how this query works. Once the user provides a ticket number to AtBot and Flow, Flow creates a variable and then queries ServiceNow. If the ticket number exists, ServiceNow provides Flow the ticket metadata. It's basically a call from Flow to get the information before Flow can do anything with it. That's the first action, and it uses the variable ticket ID. Once Flow has the metadata, the second action can only work with the system ID. So we provide that variable to ServiceNow to update the status of the ticket. System ID is required for any changes to a ticket, which is why we have to query first. Without system ID, we can't change the status of a ticket. Finally, we make updates via the ServiceNow Flow connector. Three additional fields are required for any update made to ServiceNow. These are state, resolution code, and resolution notes. If you don't include these, your flow ends with an error. In this example, we're closing the ticket, so the state will be closed, the resolution code will be closed permanently, and the resolution notes are up to you. Actually, you could ask the user for a reason for the closure and add that here. Take note that the state and resolution code must be input exactly as written, since they're actually choice fields in ServiceNow. In Flow, they're free text fields. If you prefer that this flow do something other than close, like provide an update, for example, jump to ServiceNow to see what options are available through the drop-down menus and provide the option that makes the most sense. Now let's jump right into flow. We're going to create a new flow from blank, and I'm going to name this Close ServiceNow Incident. Our first step is going to be an ad bot when an intent is used trigger. So my trigger description, I'm going to type in here. This is what the user sees if they ask for help. I'm going to set it to personal for testing. And my keyword here, the kickoff phrase, is going to be close ticket. My next step is going to be initializing a variable. I'm going to be defining variable ticket ID, which I described a little earlier. It is, in fact, a string, no initial value. And then I'm going to rename that step so I can actually tell which step initializes that variable. And then I'm going to initialize another variable, and that's going to be system ID. Also a string, also no initial value. And I'm going to rename this so I know that I'm initializing system ID here. The next step is going to be a get response from AtBot. So I'm going to ask the user what their ticket number is so I can look that up. And of course, in reply activity, you always place reply activity for AtBot. And then based on that input, I'm going to set a variable. So ticket ID is going to be set based on the response I just got through AtBot. And I'm going to rename that variable so I know which variable is being set. Now I'm going to bring in the first service now step in this flow. It's going to be a list records. This is essentially 
the query step that I talked about before. So first I'm going to identify this as an incident because that's the type of ticket that we're using in service now. And I'm going to type into the query box number equals ticket ID. You have to put that in exactly as shown, no spaces, no caps. And now I'm going to add a for each or apply to each step. Basically if we happen to get multiple tickets with the same number, it would do the same thing to each of them. I'm pulling that result, that's what you see, that ServiceNow result, that's what came from the query. And inside this apply to each, I'm going to put in a conditional statement. Basically, I want to say if the number of the ticket, that's that field you see on the left, is equal to the ticket ID, they're equal, I want to get the system ID number and apply that to our variable system ID so that I can go back to ServiceNow and say, I have system ID, I now want to update the ticket associated with system ID. So here if yes, I'm going to say system ID is equal to the sys ID field. And if no, I'm leaving it blank, but you could put an error reporting or anything else you'd like there. So now outside of the conditional and outside of the apply to each, I'm adding the update record step. And this is where I'm gonna tell ServiceNow that I have an incident and I have this system ID that I need to update some fields associated with it. So now I'm going to go find state, and I'm going to type in closed. Remember exactly as written here. Resolution code, and I'm just using Control F, Command F to find these, uh, these terms because there's dozens of these fields. Resolution code is solved permanently, and resolution notes are really up to you. I'm putting in here closed by request of user, but you could even ask the user for a closure statement, and you could include that. Now we're going to add one last action, which is a send reply back to the user to let them know, hey, we appreciate it. We got your message and we close your ticket for you. I'm including the ticket ID inside this step so that the user knows which ticket was closed for them. And of course, reply activity always gets reply activity. Now let's create this flow. And if I jump back to my list of flows, you can see it's there now. Now I'm gonna jump into Microsoft Teams and I'm going to type help to AtBot. I don't actually have to do this. I'm just showing you that the skill will show up under my personal skills because right now this is a personal skill, but you see closed ticket right there. Now I'm gonna jump into ServiceNow. I'm gonna grab a ticket number. This is actually the ticket that I used in the previous video, 295. So I'm gonna ask AtBot to close the ticket. AtBot responds with the response that we pre-programmed. I provide AtBot with the full ticket number, ending in 295, and the flow's running in the background to do all of the stuff that we just programmed, and AtBot gets back to me and says, hey, thank you, this ticket's now closed, and if I jump back to service now and I refresh, you'll see the status on ticket number 295 has changed to closed. Now, if I wanna see this in say a branded version of AtBot, all I have to do is open up the first step and change it, the trigger type from personal to shared, and it's going to now make this available to any AtBot, branded AtBots that I have. And if I jump over to the AtBot admin portal, go into the skill management shared skills, you can see that skills now there. If I update which category this is in, we're going to use the IT services category, just like in the last video. This category is a category that we use internally for our uh, IT bot called Ask IT. You'll see that Ask IT uses the IT services category, though we could add other categories. I'll open up Ask IT, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say help. Again, I don't have to, but if I forget that term, that trigger, Ask IT will let me know all of the options that I have available. And under IT services, because that's the category name, you'll see closed ticket, which is also under new ticket from the last video. And I'm going to go through and close ticket number 300, which is also from the last video. That's the one that we had Ask IT create for us. So I'm going to say close ticket. Ask IT is gonna go through the same steps in the background. I'm gonna tell Ask IT to close ticket number 300. Ask IT is gonna run that flow for me, go through into ServiceNow, close that ticket for me, and get back to me and say, hey, this ticket number is closed. Now if I jump back to ServiceNow and I refresh, and you'll see that ticket number 300 is also closed. And if I jump back to my flows, I'll actually show you 
if I click this open, you can see the two successful run, runs that I've done here. One was from AppBot, one was from Ask IT, which I think is kind of interesting to see. While this skill is more complex than opening a ticket, it's still pretty lightweight. You can do a lot more things with it. First, there's no reason you actually have to ask for a ticket number other than that input is easier on the skill builder. Instead, you could grab the person's name from the Office 365 user connector and respond with a list of open tickets and let the user choose which one they want to close. Next, you can combine this with other skills. Once a ticket is closed, it could be used to notify the support specialist working the ticket so they know they can stop working it. Also, this example covered closing a ticket, but you can duplicate this skill and change the close step to an update step. That covers both cases. Finally, there are options for smarter responses. We included no error responses, so it could be smart to include an action for if the ticket number isn't found. And it's definitely best practice to include a survey after a ticket is closed. Try Microsoft Forms or SurveyMonkey, both of which have flow connectors. So that's the next step in how you can use AtBot as your single point of entry into ServiceNow. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more great AtBot, Flow, and Lewis information. And feel free to comment if you have any questions. In our next video, we'll cover how to incorporate language understanding into the process, so you may not even need a human technician to check in on the ticket.